We're just minutes away from the confirmation hearing for Attorney General nominee Judge Merrick Garland. President Obama nominated Judge Garland to the Supreme Court in 2016, but the Senate refused to hold a hearing. But this time around, he has bipartisan support to take over as the head of the Justice Department. So let us bring in Professor Lawrence Tribe. He's a professor of constitutional law and emeritus at Harvard Law School. So, uh, Professor Tribe, you actually taught Judge Garland at Harvard, which is remarkable. Um, and the day he was nominated for President Biden's attorney general, you tweeted that he would be one of the greatest attorneys general in American history. Tell us about his days at Harvard. What was he like as a student when you questioned him, my guess is using the Socratic method, um, and the kind of responses that he gave you, and what gave you an inkling that he might one day be nominated to the Supreme Court or to be the Attorney General of the United States? Well, I have to say that was something like 40 years ago. I'm not going to pretend to remember <laughs> the interactions because I've <laughs> followed Merrick Garland's career during all the intervening time. He has been just remarkable. Remarkable as a prosecutor of the Oklahoma City bombing, remarkable as a line attorney in the Justice Department, and most remarkable as a completely fair, even-handed, unvindictive, and brilliant judge on the D.C. Circuit. I cannot think of anyone better suited for this moment when we need, again, to have faith in the system of justice and in the Department of Justice. You know, in his opening statement today, Merrick Garland intends to quote a few words from Robert Jackson. The ones I would pick out are just these. The citizen's safety lies in the prosecutor who tempers zeal with human kindness, who seeks truth and not victims, who serves the law and not factional purposes, and who approaches the task with humility. Robert Jackson, who was a great attorney general, must have been channeling the future Merrick Garland because he is going to be exactly that kind of person. I've helped him select law clerks. I've watched him as a judge. No one has a bad word to say about this man because he has no, no bone to pick with anybody. He doesn't have a vindictive bone in his body. He is fairness personified, and he is going to seek justice and truth with humility. I'm really excited for uh, the tenure of Merrick Garland as our next attorney general. So we can tell that you're sort of on the fence about him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just joking. You clearly are a big fan. Um, among some of the other things that he mentioned in his opening statement, though, um, was a pledge to fight extremism and to take the issue of racial justice extremely seriously as well. We had mentioned earlier on his work with the Justice Department uh, on the Oklahoma bombing, actually moving to Oklahoma to participate in the investigation and, and then right. prosecution. He gained a, a real thorough understanding of extremism uh, in this country. And, you know, this is a conversation that we are having now. And, and many experts will sort of uh, ha will suggest that there are roots to what we saw on the, at the attack on the Capitol, routes that go all the way back to the Oklahoma um, bombing. What do you think he can do as attorney general in these two areas, racial justice and extremism? Well, he's certainly going to give priority to attacking extremism, both domestic and foreign, and to including a search for equality and equity in every aspect of the Justice Department. You know, when I was at the Justice Department briefly under uh, President Obama, I started up a new office called the Access to Justice Initiative. And one of the great fans of that initiative was Merrick Garland. In his role, not as a member of the department at that time, but as a sitting D.C. Circuit judge, it was clear to me that his priorities and those of President Biden are almost identical. He's going to be emphasizing the allocation of resources to equity and equal opportunity, not only in the civil rights division of the Justice Department, but in every aspect of its work, in the allocation of energy and resources. And he's going to pursue with great vigor, as he makes clear in his opening statement, those who are responsible for insurrection and for attack on the integrity of our country and of our elections. 
He's not going to shrink from that, but he's going to be completely independent of the White House. It's very hard to find someone uh, with his qualities. And when Joe Biden was elected president, Merrick Garland was the person I most strongly urged him to select as the attorney general. I'm sure that many people urged other worthy candidates. There were a lot of good possibilities that the president had, but I think he made the right choice. And we will see that not only in his testimony today, but in the way he conducts himself as the chief law enforcement officer, not for the president, but for the people of the United States. Uh, Professor Tribe, we're just showing live images here on Capitol Hill of Judge Garland uh, mm -hmm. uh, getting ready to uh, take those questions from lawmakers. Um, so it, it's so interesting. We, we talked about the disappointment uh, at his Supreme Court nomination that President Obama made. And I wonder, given some of the things you just talked about, about with regards to what potentially should he become the next attorney general he would oversee, if you know that old saying, when one door closes, another opens. If at this point in our history, mm -hmm. in this country, given everything that we have been through over the last couple of years, if this nomination to be attorney general is perhaps not, perhaps it's more consequential for us as a nation, for uh, our citizenry, citizenry uh, as opposed to being a Supreme Court associate justice. In other words, that this might be a more consequential role for him um, and for us. I don't know how you see it. You know, I think you are making a very good point, and I think that is the way that Merrick Garland sees it, though I haven't talked to him about that in particular. This was his dream job. He wanted to be the chief lawyer for the people of the United States. He would have made a great Supreme Court justice. It was ridiculous and unfair to deny him a hearing. But at this point in our history, given the way the court is composed, I think he's going to make a greater difference as attorney general than he would as a frequently dissenting but occasional majority justice. So I think that the world has turned in a way that I'm rather pleased with, and I think the country will be as well. Well, Professor Tribe, it's been a great pleasure talking to you. The nomination hearing is underway, uh, so we'll have to leave it here. But uh, thank you very much, yeah. Professor Lawrence Tribe. We appreciate it very much.